Hello. Can you please say hi? Sorry, that's for my mom. She never believes that people pay to come and hear me talk. Uh, welcome to Lisbon. Welcome to my talk, Gridlock, the dual-edged sword of EV and solar APIs and grid security, and another, I don't know. First thing is first. Uh, if anyone is not okay with me cursing during the talk, can you please raise your hand? No one? You're okay. Okay. Because if you weren't, you had to fuck off because <laughs> that's me. Okay. Uh, that was me before my son decided that I wanted to raise my, uh, my hair. Uh, I'm the CTO of Atropos and the Dependent Security Researcher. Atropos is a penetration testing which is uh, mostly focused on APIs, uh, on uh, renewable energies and energy. I don't remember there's another term for renewable energy. And my research interest is uh, on APIs, IoT APIs, pretty much all the APIs. And for the past uh, 14 months, I'm also known as the person who gets admin on malware and ransomware panels because, I don't know, I have a thing. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, on Evie Stickers. I'm gonna name it Twitter because fuck Elon Musk. I'm not going to say X. And this is my personal web page. I'm uh, posting their research that uh, I don't post on my company because I don't want to have issues on my company. Solar panels, how do they work? I'm gonna be honest with you. I have no fucking idea. It seems to be really strange. They're doing a lot of stuff. They're doing solar to things. I don't know. I don't care. I'm an API guy. I only know that they have to install it on home, which is 1 kilowatt to 10 kilowatt, and on plants, which is 200 kilowatts to 20 megawatts. That's a lot of watts, first of all. The home is on roof, the plants is on plants, obviously, as the name says, and uh, it seems to be really raising in the past decade. There are several big players. There are mainly Chinese companies, lots, and I mean lots, of white-label cloud providers that provide generic implementation. They have a rush to market symptom to catch the green wave, and they have over 20 million current installation. Let's have a guess game. How many of them do you believe are vulnerable to API hacking? I can't know, all of them. <laughs> no. Let's have a baseline of 5 million. Okay? Solar market. Word installs a record of whatever, blah, blah. It's red. It wasn't red. Everyone wants to install solar panel. That's what a solar panel is. I don't understand what it says. It consists of many cells made from layers of semiconducting, blah, 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 yada, yada. It takes the sun and it makes power of it. Can you raise your hand if you know what this is? Oh, gamers, nice. So, this is a revenge story of a Fortnite game. So, my son, who is a Fortnite gamer, was playing with this guy, Tesla 2004, who was a hacker. Apparently, everyone that wins my son is a hacker or a botter, or I don't know. Everyone is better than him, so they have to be better than him. So we have decided of how we could take, he could take, I didn't do anything, a revenge of Tesla 2004. And Tesla is, this is my good side. He's uh, obviously an uh, EV, uh, an electric vehicle user, he or his mom, and he also 
probably use photovoltaic. So how bad can air events be? Uh, on the solar market, uh, we generate more than a terawatt globally. It's cheaper to produce. It's low minute denims. It can be unsupervised, focus on the unsupervised. And as it is expensive to store, it is way easier to throw it in the grid. Again, do you see any problem with that? Because it is expensive, let's throw it in the grid and let's, why not, destabilize it, right? This is the horror scenario. Uh, a really great researcher in 2015 uh, explained how you could destabilize the grid by hacking photovoltaic stuff. It's a wall of text. I'm going to read some of it, not all of it. The power grid needs to maintain a constant balance. Under normal circumstances, those countermeasures ensure grid stability. There is, however, a limit to these countermeasures. A maximum peak or deep value in a specific period of time will destabilize the grid. Do you know what destabilizing the grid means? It means you have no power. It means you cannot play Fortnite, it seems. The thing with power grids, at least in Europe, take that under consideration, is that they are very intertwined, which means connected. I learned that yesterday. Nations are constantly exporting and importing power to each other, and power grid regulations have made agreements to help each other during crisis time. So if you could take down Poland, Germany will export there. If you could take down Germany and Poland, nobody will be able to export there. So you could take down a whole continent. This is a graph that says uh, about the eclipse in Germany. This is from horror scenario, as you can see in there. I don't really understand. It's a lot of math. So if you are a math guy, go do that. I'm an API guy. Using a mathematical model, is it possible to estimate the amount of PV energy in a power grid at a given time? I'm going to be honest. We have way more than that amount. Horror scenario. What did uh, uh, I cannot really pronounce his name? Go to horrorscenario.com and see his name. He did all the heavy work of math mathematical. He got several CVs on certain inverters, only SMA. He chained them to got a remote command execution. RC stands for remote command execution for whoever doesn't know. Uh, he got RC on those devices. He interfered with the devices to destabilize the grid. The thing is that in order for a horror scenario to happen, you had to be nearby because this wasn't over cloud. So let's go with horrors on steroids. I didn't get any CVs because cloud. CVs are not assigned to any cloud because, I don't know, talk to the CVE board. There is no need for fiscal access because cloud. You could brick everything and mass. You could be inverter agnostic because, as we said, the cloud are white labeling, so why care? And we're looking at 500 gigawatt hours and a little bit more. So that's a lot. That's way more than the mathematical model told us that we need to destabilize the grid. How we are going to do that? How? The, not me, my son, or whoever else played Fortnite with Tesla 2004 is going to do it. Deer search, burp suit, ZADEX decompiler, APA, APK lab IO, which unfortunately is no longer working as it should, a small droplet on DigitalOcean, so done IO, and basic web application pen testing. Our steps is try to find a demo account. If you cannot find a demo account, try to create a register, a new account, usually with a millinator access. Spoiler alert, if you are on a SaaS and you have an ego at millinator.com, I had probably taken a look at your SaaS. And if you have an email, you, you're doing a great job. Try to find a way to control devices by exploiting and hack less Tesla. What are the results? One, two, three, four, five, six uh, clouds. 
Except Solarman, everyone else, platform admin and firmware update. I'm going to be honest, firmware updating devices is the end game of everything. What's the other result? I had to disable my uh, ad blocker for another uh, research that I'm doing that is going to be published at some point in 2025. And I kept getting this kind of uh, advertisements. I don't know why, because I was hacking. They thought that I wanted to buy. I don't want to buy it. I have enough of uh, solar panels. How did the disclosure go on the photovoltaic? Uh, I can summarize it as really, really, really bad. I would say shit, but... Three years have passed, only one vendor has uh, responded. The disclosure had full technical information. I tried really hard to communicate with them. I emailed, I sent it tweets, I called them. They re literally don't care. Disclosure responses, other than Solarman that fixed it in five days. Everyone else either did not respond or asked me who I am and when I said who I am. I went AOL. And there comes the difficult part. So I, I guess you are all here about the zero days. Uh, I'm not going to provide the zero day because uh, a lot of three-letter people came to me and told me that one does not take down the power grid and that it's not a great idea why we have a lot of wars going, giving someone an easy way to take it down, but because three years are enough, I'm going to explain as much as I can what the vulnerability is, and I guess you are in a WASP, so you can pretty much do it by yourselves. What's the plan? I don't know. Have them act on it, fix them, try to avoid global outages and make the world a safer place or whatever it is. What did I found? IDOR. Does everyone here know what an IDOR is? You don't? Oh, okay, cool. Remote command execution, broken authentication, broker authorization, and another IDOR. There were a lot of IDORs in my life. Resulting data, lots of personal identification, lots of info, remote command execution, access to internal networks, pretty much everything was fucked. Solarman had 160 gigawatts, Sunsync has 110 gigawatts, Solax has 140, Growat had 300 gigawatts by itself, and Injacon and Foxes had only 30 gigawatts and 40 gigawatts. That's Germany's power grid 100%. I know I missed not one, but a lot of them. One, when I did that, I didn't have a company, so all of the things had to come from my personal CFO, which is my wife. And she, ha she said, we have enough fucking solar panels. Do your talk with those. And two, I do believe that there are people who did uh, cloud and APIs correctly. Good for them. I'm coming for you, though. First, Solarman, the only one that answered, what did I found? Either on the user ad functionality, I could add a user with any privileges. Group and organization were consecutive integers, so I could, I could add me as an admin on every group. Full functionality of the application, potential GDPR, not potential, GDPR violation. I, I could see pretty much everything. Information on plots and power generated, but couldn't control them. Disclosure, excellent response, five days fixed, chase for verification, chase for another verification, so all in all, A+, plus, kudos on Solarman. And that's all the good that you're going to hear for photovoltaic. Second, something, probably the biggest one, which is a white label. You don't know them because your photovoltaic is using them via another name. You know what either is, right? It was everywhere. You could do pretty much whatever you want with everything. 
full functionality GDPR violation. You're going to see that page with the change title all together a lot of the times. Information on plans, interact with the plans, firmware update on both gateway and inverter, back to the network so you could use it to call back and have access to their internal network. And for, you know, the cherry on the cake, platform admin. Why the heck not, right? That's 65 pages of gateway firmware. So I could just update the firmware. That's all the firmwares and all the notifications. And that's the disclosure. Like I send emails, I send tweets, I send, I call them. They didn't give a fuck. That's the biggest one in the world, as far as I know. It's Gravat. It has 300 gigawatt hours. That's me looking at a Gravat serial panel on Google. And I had a really big discussion of me. This is me. I don't need it. I don't need it. I need it. I bought it. And I ended up here again. Full functionality, GDPR violation, interact with the plans, firmware update, back to the network, platform admin. What's the vulnerability, you ask me? The vulnerability is that they are missing basic stuff like authentication. <laughs> so they were checking, the, you're going to see them afterwards, they were checking on the login. They said, this is the right user, this is the right username, fuck off, let's go live our lives. And then you could access pretty much everything. <coughs> Dear customer, due to the spring festive holidays, we can't reply in time. Thanks for your understanding. That was the spring festive holidays of 2019. Five years, they either have a really huge spring festive holidays or they don't give a fuck. Another one, dear customer, would you please advise which country you're from? Why the fuck do you want to care where I'm from? I'm from Greece. And in 2024, right uh, yesterday, I saw that web page. Growbot take product security very seriously <laughs> and is committed to protecting our user and their data. Growbot welcomes reports of potential security issues. Notice the potential. They're not security issues. You think they are potential security issues. Blah, 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 blah. There is a form. I sent the form last February. Anyone want to guess what the response was? Solax. That one is really, really good. They had pretty much everything secured, but they only had one IDOR. They don't have always an IDOR, but that IDOR could get me platform fucking admin. So you can guess that is in user functionality. Probably what you use to update your own account. Full functionality, GDPR violation, Yada, firmware update, back to the network, platform admin. 21, 22,000 picture uh, pages of 10 of tens of devices. When I do the multiplication, that's 20, 220,000 devices. That's what you can do. You can do the inverter, the EV charger, you can firmware update, you can do whatever you want. Thank you for contacting Solax support. We're extremely busy at the moment. We will respond within 10 working days. That email was sent on 2021. They either live in another planet where the day is a year, or they just don't give a fuck. But I tweeted at them, and what they said? Hello, do you have problems with emails to us not answering? Blah, 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 blah. I'm saying, yeah, I've tried everything. Which emails has you been sending to and receive no reply? Proper English, I know. I have been sending them from there. Let me check. That's February 2nd, 2023. He's still checking, I guess. Inzacon, small one, really interesting one. I think it's from Spain, if I remember correctly. 
missing the basic con the concept of authorization altogether. All IDs are consecutive integers, so you guess it right, you're gonna see that one again. Full functionality, GDPR violation, interact with the plans, plug to the network, platform admin. This is how they interact with the web page. You can see here, reboot, RAM, you, there is also a really nice CMD, so you just click on it and it opens up a terminal on the fucking device. Because who needs authentication in that, right? Where is it? Yeah, devices, location, you, because you also want to know the location of the device. If you want to, you know, attack Germany, you want to have only the German things. I don't know anymore. That one has four years. I literally sent them an email, said, I want to buy one of your devices. They answered. They said, yeah, great. So now that I want to, to buy a device, you also have a security vulnerability. <laughs> Fuck knows. Last one, Foxes. They were really good, but So they have a really nice password reset. I know if any of you are doing web application testing, you or most of the Chinese also send you, when you send the, the password it said that says, this is your code, which is a four digit, four number code that is also brute forceable. And if you are like me and want to write brute forcers, you end up with everything. Again, Full functionality, back forward, firmware update, interact with the plans, you say it, we have it. Anyone want to guess what the disclosure of that is going to be? They don't care. They, they, they really don't fucking care. I, 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 don't, I cannot really emphasize how much they don't give a flying fuck. But Tesla might not have a photovoltaic system, so he or his mom might be driving a Tesla. Let's go and take a look at the EV chargers. Project EV, uh, some kind of installations in the UK. Growat had the same cloud. Do you remember the Growat cloud that was missing the basic concept of authentication? There it is again. The UK Department of Transport approved it. Why the fuck not? You know? And it's China based. Can anyone tell me in here what you don't see? What? A cookie? An authentication? Authorization? Something? No, we don't care about this. Charge ID TDD0 and the XXS stands for any number you feel like it. You're going to see that on uh, EV, on PVs too, on EVs too. Lock and lock, remote firmware update, backdoor, GDPR, break all the devices, platform admin. I had to get the BBC involved just for that. They did not respond for weeks. They in visual eventually fixed it after a failed attempt, and they have a stateless login right now. There is no cookie, there is no auth. I don't really want to know how they do it or if it is okay. It seems to be working. I let it be. That's for their EV. The photovoltaic, it's still without any authentication because, you know, why the fuck would they want? EV box, based in Amsterdam, Netherlands, <laughs> Department of Transport approved, acquired by NC. Can you tell me, like, they had a really good API, one of the best APIs that I have ever seen. They had no obvious issues. Can you tell me what you see in here that might be a vulnerability? No one? Roles, right? Why the fuck you pass a cow admin, a cow donor? So, let's pass a tenant admin. That's 15,000 users, 10,000 accounts, total compromise of everything. I also, I mean everything. I mean also the servers because why the fuck wouldn't you have a CMD? I should stop saying fuck. Sorry about that. 
uh, potential GDPR violation, full admin functionality, platform admin, access to their network too. Two hours to respond, 24 hours to fix. Great guys, really, really good. Double checked that everything was fixed, excellent response. I'm really happy when I'm interacting with this kind of uh, companies. I'm not really happy when I'm interacting with this kind of companies, though. 200 users based in Barcelona, Spain, Department of Transport approved, merged, and they want to raise 300 million, uh, 300 million dollars. We're going to see how we broke that. Second level IDOR, anything in the request body was not uh, validated. Four different instances of this in the APIs. Two were reported on uh, January of 2019, and two of them were reported nine months later. So they didn't really care, they just fixed what it was reported. You could add any charger that you want on your access config. Total control, lock and lock, no way to, updo to update, so it wasn't the custom firmware. GDPR violation is everywhere. No platform I'm in, though, unfortunately. How did they respond? They responded in the next day. They fixed it in a couple of days. They re-engaged after a couple of months because we found the second issue quite similar to the first one. Fixed in a couple of days again. They wanted to engage for us to provide the site of their new hardware platform, but I had to sign an NDA. So, yeah, no. I don't like NDAs. And then this happened this uh, this February. Electric car chargers pull amid warnings. Uh, they are no longer allowed to sell uh, their charger in the UK because they are insecure. Who would have thought? Last one is the first charger in the UK, the first that was accepted as a charger in the UK. It's based in London, approved of trust Department of, for Transport approved. It had a lot of teething problems, 15,000 users as an estimation. The Raspberry Pi that it was, their hardware is easily rooted. There's no bootloader security. I recovered their full source code, and by source code I mean two Python scripts <laughs> with hard-coded credentials. You can see in there that they have FTP credentials for their servers. They have root credentials for pretty much everything, because why the heck not, right? And full documentation of it, because if you don't want to, if you don't understand Python, <laughs> they also have uh, comments of it, because they're good developers, I guess. Full decryption of all devices communication, total control, Mimicking the server communication, because I always wanted to be a server. Make all devices part of a, no a botnet without needing to reflash. Why the fuck would it I want a botnet? GDPR violation, I really love that I have to say potential GDPR violation, because I'm not doing any GDPR violation. Credential leakage, platform admin. At least they tried. Responded in a timely fashion, worked hard in reworking their communication and everything, and their new EO Mini is still Raspberry Pi, so it has the same vulnerability. Raspberry Pi, Pi, P, I don't know how you pronounce it. Valid prototyping device, not a good idea to put into, into production, allows an easy extraction of pretty much everything, easily routable, and it doesn't have a secure uh, bootloader. Public chargers. There's only one public charger, and then I'm off. ChargePoint is an American electric vehicle. It's one of the two th top three public chargers provider in the world. I'm gonna tell you a little thing. When someone says we are one of the top three, it means they are the third. <laughs> Went public in 2021. They had a publicly exposed, unauthenticated GraphQL endpoint with introspection leaking their full schema, potentially, I didn't touch it, their full schema as no authentication parameter were to be seen. So you could pretty much change everything. Okay. Crime alert. API research is really, really, really tricky in not doing crime. Never ever interact with a device you don't own. If you mistakenly do it, notify the vendor immediately. 
And if it is a Chinese vendor, they're going to ignore you like there is no fucking tomorrow. But you did your thing. You didn't do a crime. Third point. Responded in an hour. Fixed on the same day. Excellent response. Acknowledged that there was an issue. I could have checked further, but I didn't. And we're getting to the conclusion. First of all, you as the client go with a provider that will act on problems. Try to isolate IoT devices on their own VLANs. Vulnerabilities will happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And if you are a provider for the love of whatever it's holy, know that authorization not equals authentication. The fact that someone is authenticated doesn't mean that it would have to access everything in the world. Rush to market cannot always be the excuse. At some point, you have to understand that you have a mature product. You have been in the market for five years. Get your security tested. Get pen tested. Do do security testing. Do care about your security because if you don't, somebody else will, and you will end up in a wasp Lisbon being presented. Pen test your things. Come on. Thank you. Any questions, guys? No questions? Oh, there's the guy. Thank you very much for your talk. It was very interesting. Um, have you ever tried to talk to uh, governmental bodies about that? Because they might to, be to who? To who? Governmental bodies? Yes. Okay. What happened then? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Trying to fix the government, so it needs a lot of, you know, bureaucratic stuff. They will at some point, they're, do they're doing their best to do regulation stuff. At least in the UK and some of the EU parties, they try to ban stuff that they are not secure, but it takes its own time, as you might understand. Anyone else? Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, what brand would you actually recommend? Then? No. <laughs> no. 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 There are good brands. It's not my place or time to. I, I already said, try to go with a vendor that seems that will react. Vulnerabilities will happen. It's what they do with the disclosure and how they fix it that makes them a good vendor or a bad vendor, in my point of view. I cannot really tell you. There are a couple that I totally respect and would go with them, but um, it's not my place to name one. Uh, that's fine. Thank you. It's my place to say what the bad ones are. <laughs> Any more guidance for protection? You said, like, isolate them in VLANs at home, that is in a home network. It could be tricky. Thanks. I'm going to be honest. Uh, you can put them in a VLAN, but as long as I can uh, upgrade their firmware and put them on fire, your VLAN is no use of when something is on fire as far as I'm concerned, right? So I really don't know what you should do. I don't have any photovoltaic in my home because I'm old and I don't like them, so you do you. Anyone else? Uh, I'm from South Africa and we've got major electricity problems, so I've got a sun sink, but it's completely offline through a Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant, so that helps a little bit, but the, the other problem is the guys who installed it just put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is the password and they put it in, so even if you patch every vulnerability, that's getting rolled out to millions of people back home. I haven't looked directly at inverters. The hard-coded passwords is a thing that is happening on pretty much all the IoT devices, and it's something that uh, UK and EU are trying to put regulations on. 
These were all API issues. So even if they change the password, as long as I'm a platform admin, you can have whatever you want. You have to function authentication if there, if there exists. I'm in your device. Full stop. But I didn't get the CV because cloud, I guess. All good? Nothing else? Thank you guys.